Welcome back to another episode of This Week on Channel 9. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Cloud Advocate. And as promised, this week I am wearing what I think is probably my favorite shirt design ever because it fully celebrates my obsession slash love for disaster companies. And so this particular shirt is a tribute to two of my favorite disaster companies, Fire Media of Firefest fame and Enron, a company that imploded so spectacularly, it didn't just take down itself. It was directly responsible for the collapse of one of the world's biggest accounting firms, Arthur Anderson. Anyway, I love it. And uh, the only way it could be better is if there was a Theranos connection. I've put a link to where I got the shirt and many others that you've seen on TWC9 in the show notes and description down below. Okay, enough of all that. Let's get into this week's latest developer news. Okay, so first up, at the Microsoft Inspire conference this week, the Microsoft Edge team shared some updates about the new Chromium version of Edge and its capabilities for enterprise customers of all sizes. And the dev channel now has enterprise features enabled by default, and it's ready for evaluation and supported by detailed deployment and configuration documentation. And the team is also offering full support for deployment in pilot and production environments through our commercial support channels. And uh, dev channel builds, including offline installers and ADMX files, are available at microsoftedgeinsider.com slash enterprise. And I've got a link to the announcement blog and the enterprise landing page down below. And offline installers are available for Mac OS and 32-bit and 64-bit MSI Windows installers. And the blog post details the roadmap for where the Edge team is, as well as plans for the future. And so some of the things uh, today include Internet Explorer mode, the ability to sign in with AAD accounts, enterprise-grade PDF support, and more. And uh, the team wants your feedback, so please offer it to the team in the Edge Insiders forum or via the feedback uh, tool that's built into the new versions of Edge. Next up, in some other Microsoft Edge news, is a very cool VS Code extension now in preview called Elements for Microsoft Edge. And this, this extension is really cool because it lets you use the Edge Elements tool inside the VS Code editor and then use it to fix styling, layout, and CSS issues with your site. And I've been playing with this for a couple of weeks, and it's really awesome, especially for anyone who frequently relies on using Edge or Chrome dev tools for making changes to HTML or CSS on a site they're working on, and they want to, uh, a way to easily commit those changes inside their IDE. And so this is very much a work in progress, and the team intends to move forward based on user feedback. And so I've got a link in the description box for the blog post, the extension, and the GitHub repo. In some Xamarin news, Xamarin Essentials 1.2 is out, and it's got a ton of new features, including new file preview features, enabling you to send, view, and email files from a single cross-platform API. But this is even better. Starting with Xamarin Essential 1.3, watchOS and tvOS are officially supported platforms with a limited API surface, and the team has implemented as many features on those platforms as they could, including preferences, secure storage, sensors, and many more. And you can find a full outline of what's supported on the Xamarin.Essentials platform support page, and that's linked below. Also, uh, Tizen support is coming to Xamarin Essentials uh, too, and this is uh, courtesy of uh, the uh, Tizen team at Samsung, and um, they work closely with the Xamarin team to offer the support. And so I've got a link to James's post outlining lining all this news as as well as the NuGet for the preview build and the GitHub repo um, in the description down below. Now, Xamarin is kind of a perfect segue into talking about .NET Core and C Sharp. And so over on Dev.2, Chris Noring has a great blog post about how you can get started with .NET Core and C Sharp using VS Code. And Chris's article covers all the basics of getting started, installing .NET Core, and building your first app. Over on Azure, there is a blog post on the official Azure blog talking about some of the updates designed to make it easier and cheaper for developers to bring their Linux web apps to Azure App Service. And Azure App Service is a managed platform that makes it super easy to deploy your code or containers, and then you can deploy them to Azure without having to worry about details regarding the underlying infrastructure. In some machine learning news, ML.NET 1.2 is available. And ML.NET, if you don't know, is an open source and cross-platform machine learning framework for .NET developers. And ML.NET also includes Model Builder, which is a simple UI tool for Visual Studio. And it also includes the ML.NET CLI um, to uh, make it super easy to build custom machine learning models using automated machine learning. And uh, that's known as AutoML. And so links to the announcement blog and download links are in the description down below. 
On Channel 9 this week, James talks about fast lane automation for mobile apps on The Xamarin Show. And over on the IoT Show, Olivier discusses the no-code way to connect sensors to Azure IoT. And finally, on Azure Friday, Scott Hanselman, everyone's favorite developer, talks about how to secure traffic between pods using network policies in Azure Kubernetes Service, or AKS. And now it's time for my pick of the week. So this week marks the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11 mission, and that was the mission that first landed humans on the moon. So cool. And so obviously, this is one of the greatest achievements in science and technology of all time, especially when you consider that the Apollo guidance computer was less powerful than a modern calculator. Anyway, I would like to thank Raymond Chen for pointing out the website apolloinrealtime.com. And this site lets you experience the mission from mission control film footage, TV transmissions, mission control in space to ground audio, photographs and more in real time 50 years later. And so you can also just experience any part of the mission that you want, but watching it unfold in real time 50 years later is a treat. And uh, I was born about 15 years after Apollo 11, so I obviously never experienced watching it on TV, but it is so cool to see today thanks to modern tech. So uh, let me know your thoughts on Apollo 11 anniversary and anything else be covered in the comments down below. And if you like this episode, please give it a like on YouTube. It really helps us out. And go ahead and subscribe to Microsoft Developer for all of your dev needs. See you next time.